Season's greetings. Steamy Stories is here to help with your holiday gifts. May we suggest you delve into our adult coloring books titled Bromantic Bliss, or turn up the heat even more with our Steam Room Confidential Novella Collection. They fit perfectly in a stocking or under a tree. All our steamy books and movies can be found at steamypodcast.com. So check them out and pick them all up now. And have a happy holiday. Matthew is passionate about Christmas, but his boyfriend Christopher didn't share the same enthusiasm. After five years together, Matthew delivered a clear ultimatum. Either we spend the holidays with your family, or we need to reconsider our relationship. Christopher understood Matthew's frustration about not having met his parents and revealed that he comes from an unconventional family. Matthew thought he was prepared for any family member Christopher might introduce, but he was completely blindsided by the revelation of who Christopher's parents really were. Welcome, my little elves, to my winter wonderland. Settle by the fire while I prepare a toasty cup of cocoa for you. I'm your host, Mark Montgomery, and I've got a hunky holiday tale bound to warm more than just your cookies. Our brilliant scribe, J.C. Calciano, has crafted a two-part holiday story for you that's sure to ignite the festive spirit in your heart and maybe even spark your Yule log. So snuggle under a cozy blanket, position yourself beneath the mistletoe, and get ready for part one of a sizzling Christmas tale, North Pole Naughtiness. Matthew, the epitome of a hallmark heartthrob, with chiseled facial features and a physique that could make any movie poster smolder, glanced up from the script, strewn across the kitchen table. Known for captivating audiences in high-profile romance films, his magnetic charisma extended beyond the screen. Yet as desirable as his rugged good looks were, Matthew wore them with a disarming humility. Rather than flaunting his aesthetics, he viewed them as a familial legacy, which he had adeptly leveraged to carve a comfortable life for himself and his partner, Chris. The afternoon sun danced through their West Hollywood living room window, its rays kissing the wooden floors, imparting a golden hue that lit up their treasure trove of memories. Framed pictures chronicled the couple's myriad escapades, candid moments of laughter, intimate embraces, and stolen glances exchanged amidst exotic vacations, festive celebrations, and jubilant gatherings. Yet, there was a notable absence. The joyous charm of Christmas remained conspicuously missing from their photo collection, especially at this time of year. A soft creak underfoot signaled Chris's entrance, returning from a demanding day at the weather station where he worked. Matthew raised an eyebrow, pleasantly surprised to see Chris home at such an early hour. Given Chris's pension for immersing himself in late-night experiments and intricate engineering challenges at his lab, his early arrival was a rare delight. And as Matthew's eyes fell upon Chris, a soft chuckle escaped his lips. Illuminated by the setting sun, Chris's disheveled brown locks and slightly crumpled coat only added to his allure. Those striking features, the chiseled jawline, intense gaze, and the tousled richness of his hair, combined with the athletic build his lab coat barely concealed, never ceased to amaze Matthew. There was an undeniable charm in Chris's blend of intellectual prowess and rugged handsomeness. It was this captivating duality that had initially drawn Matthew to Chris. Flashing a playful smirk, Chris quipped, Daydreaming about our next trip, are we? His gaze darted toward the vacation photos. Matthew shook his head, amusement lacing his voice. Summer's away away, handsome. 
I've been pondering something else. Why haven't we celebrated Christmas with your family? I haven't even met them yet. A hint of unease replaced Chris's teasing grin. Well, between our own holiday festivities and commitments, things just, well, they never aligned. Matthew gently interjected. Chris, I've never been introduced to them in all our years together. I can't help but wonder if there's a problem. Chris exhaled as he hunkered down for what was about to come next. It's not a matter of introducing you, Matt. It's just... It's a complicated relationship I have with them. And sadly to say, I must add to that complication by leaving you and returning to my folks' house for the holidays. An unexpected situation has come up. I gotta leave tomorrow, so... I won't be here for Christmas with you. Matthew's hold on his coffee mug grew firmer. You're leaving on Christmas? Is everyone okay? Chris paused, searching for the right words. Yes, I believe so. I'm not sure what it is. I just received a text from my mom asking me to return immediately. It's a family matter. Quite urgent, I believe. Setting his mug aside, Matthew tenderly took Chris's hands, intertwining their fingers. We've weathered so many storms together. Let me by your side for this one, too. Please, let me come with you. Chris's cheeks flushed, his emotions evident. I wish it were that simple. Matthew leaned in, his voice determined. All the more reason for me to accompany you. If we're envisioning a shared future, it's about time I got to know your family, problems and all. A hint of a smile danced on Chris's lips. Well, if you think you're up for the challenge, then by all means, come along. Matthew's eyes twinkled with mischief and affection as laughter bubbled between them. Chris leaned forward sealing their playful exchange with a fervent kiss. Gently breaking away, Matthew looked deep into Chris's eyes. Whatever lies ahead, eccentric family or pressing matters, we'll tackle it as a team. Chris exhaled, visibly relieved. All right, but remember, I did warn you. Matthew grew quiet now, deep in thought. His head cocked to one side as he wondered out loud. I hope we don't need to fly somewhere. It's December 21st already. There's no way we'll find flights out of Los Angeles at this late date. Chris put a comforting hand on Matt's shoulder as he explained. Don't worry about it. It's all taken care of. My dad set up our travel. It's all done. He's texting me the details this evening. Matt stopped dead in his tracks. Wait, what do you mean your father arranged transportation? Matthew questioned, his eyebrows furrowing in confusion. He already envisioned the nightmare of overpriced last-minute airfare and the stress of packed airports. The holiday rush was no joke. Chris, trying to suppress a smirk, said, My father, well, let's just say he has certain abilities. That fateful night, as the clock hands inched towards midnight, Matthew found himself pressed against Chris's chest, lulled into a light slumber by the soft mumblings of the television. The slow rhythm of his partner's breathing offered him a comforting cuddle buddy. Just as the evening's serenity threatened to pull him into a deeper sleep, a gentle tap on his shoulder brought him back to the edge of consciousness. Matthew... Chris whispered tenderly, his lips brushing the edge of Matthew's ear. Our ride's here. Time to get moving. Blinking away the haze of sleep, Matthew tried to process Chris's words. His mind was heavy with the remnants of dreams, and the idea of leaving the warmth of their cozy living room at such an ungodly hour was disorienting. Sensing Matthew's confusion, Chris swiftly and silently gathered their bags, 
which had been meticulously packed earlier. His voice, brimming with a touch of urgency, reassured Matthew. Don't worry, everything's in place. While Matthew's head struggled with the details of leaving their home for the holidays, the calming sight of Chris's reassuring smile grounded him. He rose unsteadily to his feet and followed Chris's lead. Expecting to see the familiar sight of a waiting Uber outside their house, Matthew was taken aback when Chris led him around to the backyard instead. A sturdy ladder was propped up against the house, its top rungs disappearing over the roof's edge. Chris turned to Matthew, his eyes shimmering with anticipation. Listen, I need you to trust me. Take a deep breath, keep cool, and don't freak out, all right? Matthew gulped, his gaze flitting between the ladder and Chris's earnest expression. I trust you, he replied, even as a flutter of unease danced in his chest. But what's going on? Without answering, Crift deftly began climbing the ladder, the two overnight bags slung over his shoulder, seemingly not hindering his ascent. Matthew quickly followed Chris. As he neared the rooftop, doubts about his boyfriend's sanity overwhelmed him. Has he gone mad? How can I coax him back down safely? But as he hoisted himself up the last few rungs, a sight stopped him dead in his tracks, causing him to gasp audibly. His legs wobbled dangerously, a foot slipping from its hold. He felt a terrifying sensation of weightlessness as he was sure to plummet two stories to the ground below. But in a flash, Chris's strong hand latched onto his wrist, saving him. Steady, Chris murmured, his voice thick with concern. I've got you. Just be careful. Matthew managed to regain his balance and stood beside Chris on the roof. Yet his mind struggled to comprehend the scene before him. Chris placed a reassuring hand on Matthew's shoulder, offering a comforting smile, but it did little to shield him from the sheer amazement of seeing eight reindeer and a vacant sleigh on their rooftop. I guess it's clear now who my dad is, Chris said, his laughter filling the night air. It was that peculiar, wonderful laugh that Matthew had found so enchanting over the last five years. Not just any laugh, but distinctly unique, ho, 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 that suddenly made all the sense in the world. Realization dawned on Matthew's face as he neared the magnificent animals their eyes lighting up at Chris's approach. Your dad is Santa Claus, the actual Santa Claus, and you kept it a secret. With a gentle affection, Chris stroked the underside of Donner's neck before replying, I said it was complicated, and if you think this is crazy, just wait until we reach our destination. Matthew's fingers touched the grand red sleigh, admiring the emerald green inlays that perfectly offset the aged red paint. This is the real deal, isn't it? With a mix of awe and trepidation, he stepped into the legendary sleigh, holding tightly, aware of the magical journey ahead. Chris flashed a mischievous wink. You always said you loved roller coasters. Trust me, this ride will top them all. Ready? Grasping the reins with confidence, Chris called out with fervor. Now, Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen. On Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, dash away all. Matthew captivated by the surreal moment, laughed heartily. It's just like in the movies. This is unreal. With another echoing ho, 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 
Chris urged the reindeer forward. The sleigh jolted forward and soared, whisking them through the midnight sky on a direct course for the North Pole. The ride took little time at all. It seemed like the sleigh no sooner took off than it arrived at its destination. Matthew noted that the northern sky was unusually dark. He expected a night such as this, without a cloud in the sky and not an ounce of pollution, would be bright. But instead, it was dank and murky. Chris glanced around, slightly puzzled at the sight of the sky as well. Typically, the pole was illuminated by the magical dance of the aurora borealis, or at least by the glint of moonlight on the pristine snow. But tonight, the North Pole was bathed in an uncanny, velvety darkness. Below them, Santa's castle, however, was an entirely different spectacle. Matthew gave himself a playful pinch to ensure this wasn't some whimsical midnight fantasy. Though enveloped in shadow, the towering majestic manor radiated a warm, welcoming glow from its windows. Chris shot Matthew a flirtatious glance. Brace yourself for our landing. I might be a tad rusty with this sleigh. Landings can be an adventure. As they neared the grandiose structure, two massive doors swung open, inviting them inside. Sensing their homecoming, the reindeer gracefully glided in, delivering a surprisingly silky and flawless touchdown. As the gigantic hangar doors clanked closed, protecting them from the chilly embrace of the outside, another set of entryways from the opposite side creaked open. And, in an exhilarating burst of energy, they were greeted by two of history's most beloved figures and a bustling troop of elves. Their faces lit up with excitement, especially eager to get a closer look at Chris and the handsome man by his side. Welcome home, boomed Santa Claus, whose attire was a curious mix of what could only be dubbed as the most garish Christmas sweater in existence, worn-out jeans, and bright red Crocs. He embraced Chris in a hearty bear hug. Their resemblance was undeniable. Mrs. Claus, with a twinkle in her eyes that reminded Matthew of Angela Lansbury, made a beeline for him. Wrapping him in a tight embrace, she smothered his forehead with rapid, affectionate kisses. Oh, we're so thrilled to meet you. Can't wait to have you join our merry festivities, she half sang, her enthusiasm infectious. Sensing Matthew's slightly overwhelmed demeanor amidst the Claus family fervor, Chris quickly chimed in. Okay, okay, everyone, give Matt a minute. This is a lot. He cast a protective glance toward Matthew, their connection evident. Mrs. Claus nodded her understanding, instructing Rodney, the chief elf, to ensure Matthew felt at home and at ease in the grand manner. She attempted to be discreet with her stealthy instructions to Rodney, but Matthew could hear her instructions quite clearly as she whispered. Be extra nice to Matthew. He's a big star in Hollywood, you know. I've seen all his romance movies. He's quite talented. Matthew felt pleased upon hearing her private correspondence to the worker. And he was proud to know he had discovered that Chris's mom, a celebrity herself, was a fan of his work. Santa, ever the taskmaster, cleared his throat. Now, as joyous as this reunion is, we've pressing business come dawn. Let's not forget it's now December 22nd. Breakfast is at a sharp 6 a.m. and work must be done. Chris groaned exaggeratedly, his eyes rolling with feigned annoyance. 6 a.m.? We'll need until at least 11 to surface. Santa laid a gentle hand on Chris's shoulder eyes twinkling with mischief and love. I understand, but 6 a.m. it must be. We're in a bind, and even that's cutting it close. 
eager to play his part, Matthew interjected. We'll be ready at six, sir. Whatever's needed, we're on it. Santa's piercing blue gaze settled on Matthew. I'm grateful to meet you finally, Matthew, Santa began warmly. We've waited five years for Chris to bring you home. Mrs. Claus and I have been eager to meet the man who's captured our boy's heart. Stifling a mighty yawn, Chris interjected with a playful smirk. Well, if breakfast is in a mere five hours, bedtime better be ASAP. Matthew tossed and turned, struggling to sleep amidst the whirlwind of excitement. After all, it wasn't every day you found yourself at Santa Claus's castle in the North Pole for Christmas. Despite snuggling close to Chris, enveloping himself in the warmth of his lover, sleep remained elusive for about 20 minutes. Suddenly, his Apple Watch buzzed, waking them both by signaling the ungodly hour they were meant to meet Santa for breakfast was upon them. Ready for breakfast with the parents? Chris teased, his eyes sparkling with mischief. Matthew groaned dramatically, struggling to grasp the situation. Seriously, Chris, how did you casually forget to mention that your dad is the Santa Claus? Chris's playful demeanor faded, replaced by a more introspective look. Dad and I, we've had our disagreements. That's why I never told anyone before. Can you imagine the pressure of being Santa's son? Especially being his gay son. I just wanted freedom to pursue science and, well, find love. How was that going to happen at a polar ice cap? Was I being unreasonable? Was that too much to ask? Pulling Chris closer. Matthew whispered. I'm so proud of you for forging your own path. If you hadn't taken that leap and moved to Los Angeles, I would have never met the love of my life. Touched, Chris's eyes gleamed with gratitude. Yet, Matthew's watch reminder chimed in again, nudging them about their imminent breakfast appointment. I suppose we shouldn't keep dear old dad waiting especially when he thinks the situation's dire enough to drag me all the way here to the North Pole. Walking to the breakfast room, Matthew's awe grew with every step. The castle's hallways boasted opulent designs reminiscent of Renaissance masterpieces. Noticing Matthew's astonishment, Chris quipped, A tad over the top, right? Mom has, uh, unique taste. I've suggested a remodel, but good luck getting an interior designer to the North Pole. Matthew chuckled, appreciating both the humor and the truth in Chris's words. As they entered the grand breakfast hall, a smorgasbord beckoned. Santa was already piling more peppermint pancakes on his plate, while Mrs. Claus delicately spooned a fruit and yogurt parfait. Come on, boys, dive into breakfast. Santa boomed jovially. But make it quick. We've got some serious Christmas business to tackle. During breakfast, the mood was pleasant and friendly. Chris's joy at the reunion with his parents and the elves was undeniable. However, he couldn't shake the feeling that the castle's atmosphere had shifted since he left five years ago. While everyone was their usual amiable self, the enchanting melodies and festive spirit that once resonated through the workshop were conspicuously absent. In his earlier moments, the castle was alive with mirth and merrymaking. Now, all he could perceive was a hive of hardworking elves, their joyful spontaneity replaced by determined industry. Chris reasoned that maybe, as a grown man, he was seeing Christmas for what it truly was, not just festive magic, but the result of the relentless effort of many dedicated hands. Santa, his beard dusted with sugar from the plums he'd just devoured, turned the conversation serious. Directing his gaze at Matthew, he said, 
I wish our introduction could have been under more festive circumstances, Matthew. Ideally, we'd take the time to get to know the man who's captured Chris's heart better. But two days from Christmas, we're in the midst of a dire crisis. That's why I had to summon my son urgently. Mrs. Claus, her usually radiant face mirroring her husband's gravitas, took over. Chris, my dear, we're at our wit's end. We hope your scientific expertise and engineering acumen can unravel this mystery concerning the Aurora Borealis. Chris's brow furrowed in concern, a realization dawning on him. Without thinking, he expressed his inner thoughts out loud. That explains the unusually dark skies when we arrived. The northern lights have disappeared. Not even a trace left. What on earth could have caused this? Santa sighed heavily. That's exactly what we're trying to decipher, Chris. Without the northern lights, I'm left with no way to guide my sleigh. Delivering gifts worldwide becomes an impossible task. If we don't figure out the reason behind this darkness, then... He paused, swallowing hard, his eyes filled with sorrow. Christmas might just be cancelled this year. Christmas cancelled? Oh no, this can't be! Who's going to come down my chimney tonight? Who am I kidding? I've got a list of eligible bachelors standing by. <laughs> You're listening to Steamy Stories, the podcast where bromance turns bromosexual. Written by J.C. Calciano. I hope you've enjoyed part one of North Pole Naughtiness and are planning to join me for part two of the story. Things get pretty hot and wild at the Claus's Christmas Eve party. Trust me. So you don't want to miss when Chris shows Matthew his North Pole. <laughs> oh, bro.